Welcome to AQMD on the Air. I'm your host, Mark Carroll. The Leonard Transportation Center at Cal State San Bernardino was founded in 2006 and was created through a multi-year grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation and matched with funding from Caltrans. The theme of the center is decision-making and management of transportation systems. The Institute is particularly charged with attending to regional transportation needs while serving as a focal point within the Inland Empire to maximize the impact of local transportation initiatives. Our guest today is the current director of the Leonard Transportation Center, Dr. John Wu. Dr. Wu, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the goals and priorities of, uh, of your center? Of course. Um, our goal is to be the honest broker of transportation issues in the Indian Empire and also uh, in Southern California. And uh, we were funded by the Department of Transportation multiple year grant and also matched by uh, Caltrans. Uh, we want to do three things and three things only. One is we do research, and the second thing we do is education, and then we also do a tr uh, technology transfer and outreach. So we do only these three things. And for research, we work with Cal State faculty to uh, engage them in transportation-related areas. And, and when I talk about Cal State faculty, I don't just talk about Cal State San Bernardino faculty, but overall Cal State, 23 campuses, all these transportation-related faculty expertise uh, is under our dispo uh, disposal. And uh, when we talk about education, we talk about undergraduate and graduate education. We also talk about um, uh, certificate training programs and then the internships and scholarships to attract the best men and women into transportation fields. Uh, the third thing we do is technology transfer and outreach. We host major uh, conferences in the region. We have three conferences. One is research oriented. Uh, the second one is for transportation and logistic pr uh, practitioners. And the third one is for transportation policy discussions. Uh, we also produce thousands of audio, uh, MP3 audio podcasts, mm -hmm. video casts, and all these presentations we put online on the internet so that people can download and enjoy these insightful discussions that we put together when we host conferences. Oh, that's great. Uh, goods movement is an economic engine in, in Southern California, as you know, and over 40% of the nation's imports come through the ports of Los Angeles uh, or Long Beach. Can you tell us a little bit about what the expectations are over the coming years for this and uh, what kind of impact uh, this uh, goods movement could have on our region? Well, international trade is very important and it's been increasing over the years. And I think as, as we buy more and more um, stuff uh, from other countries, we're going to see this international trade continue to boom. And with that international trade, our ports have been busy uh, over the past few decades. And I think, like you said, 40% plus uh, cargo traffic pass it through this region, through the ports. Um, we're going to see that continue to happen. Uh, we're going to see an increase in uh, cargo traffic. However, uh, keep in mind that companies are continuously improving their productivity in moving these goods in the supply chains. So even though the cargo volume has increased in the past, the, uh, the number of containers that needed to be uh, transporting these goods uh, is not increasing proportionally uh, to the uh, freight traffic. So we have higher um, uh, volume coming in, but we may not have the same amount of increase in uh, a number of containers because of the productivity gains. Okay? The uh, ports bring about uh, one million or so jobs to the region, you know, all these transportation mm -hmm. services combined and all that, and we know that, and it's good impact. It supports all the families that pursue their American dreams and, and afford their uh, lifestyles in Southern California, and that's the positive side. On the negative side, you all know that uh, we talk about congestion, we talk about air pollution, and we talk about these issues when uh, this cargo comes through this region, it's not used to serve the residents in the region, but then, you know, they pass through uh, uh, our region and, and move on to Chicago, to other places to serve the rest of the residents in the country, and we're fine with that. But then we need to find ways to mitigate the negative impacts uh, in the area so we can continue to enjoy the lifestyles that we enjoy and then uh, uh, serve the rest of the country in the same time. Well, to pick up on that, you talk about the impacts on the region and we know that with this growth it's going to present significant economic opportunities, as you said, but also the challenges of air quality and public health. And, uh, and I under you talked about education, you talked about certificate programs. I understand one of them is on sustainable transportation. Is, is that the kind of thing you're talking about that, that can move us forward to help mitigate the impacts uh, on air quality, for instance? I think so. We, we're trying to do our best. Um, 
I think the current model does not work. We have to realize that in the past, uh, we always wanted to build more transportation capacity, okay? But the transportation capacity cannot match the population growth and also the demand for transportation. In the past 20, 30 years, the transportation capacity only grew at about 4 or 5%, while the demand for transportation grew at about 40%. And we realized that we cannot build highways, unlimited highways, in the future. Right. We have to find different ways to solve these transportation issues. We all want to go places. We, won't, we all want to have a safe, affordable transportation. But how do we do it? And I think the Sustainable Transportation Certificate Training Program helps municipal governments, help all these different decision makers and policy uh, makers understand that there might be different ways that we can uh, work on these transportation issues. So we expose them to different uh, decision-making models. Profits may not be the only goals that we pursue. Okay? We need to think about the environment. We need to think about the people uh, that, that are impacted by our decisions. So this is the, uh, the idea of having this sustainable transportation uh, certificate training program. And, and we provide them with tools. Mm -hmm. uh, not just, okay, we talk about it, but hey, how do you do it? Oh, we don't know. We give them ideas and then we also give them tools so they can use these tools and models to analyze their decisions and then come up with better ways to measure their impact. One of the things that I know that's going on with regard to sustainability is, um, is related to greenhouse gas reductions. Um, the state adopted AB 32 and in following that SB 375, which looks at reducing um, vehicle miles traveled, the amount of, of um, miles that cars are on the road, and that's obviously connected to the sustainability that communities are working on. So how do you think the regional planning, the transportation, the air quality, and the municipalities can work together uh, on these issues to not only address the congestion issues, but also reduce the emissions and the greenhouse gases? I, I think SB 375 aims to reduce vehicle mi mileage travel, as you mentioned. Um, the fundamental thing is that we need to look at not just why people travel, but how they travel. And, and we need to go back to the reasons why people live in certain places and then work in other places and then shop in another, okay? Uh, is it sustainable? Mm -hmm. is, is commuting 30 to 90 minutes one way every day sustainable? If not, what else can they do? Um, I think if we take the Asian or European model, or, or uh, let, let's use the New York City or a San Francisco model. If we can have a place where people live upstairs and then go downstairs to their shops or offices, there's no need for them to drive. There's no need for commute. And that will solve a lot of transportation problems if we can have that happen. How do we make that happen? We need to work on uh, regional planning. We need to work with uh, cities, work with uh, county governments. Local municipalities are very important. And they realize that these issues such, such as air pollution, congestion, and the safety and mobility issues don't stop at the city borders. Okay, um, you have a polluted uh, port, and then we suffer inland, you know, 40, 30 miles inland, because uh, we breathe the same air. Right. We need to understand that. And, and one of the uh, research projects that we support last year was, was to develop a tool using uh, GIS to help these local governments plan on land use better. Because you have a couple of uh, different uh, lots that you can, you can um, zone them differently. How do you know that the zoning that you use is going to minimize the greenhouse gas emissions in the future. How do you know that the different uses of these parcels in your city can help you meet the SB 375 goals? And we have tools that we can provide to these city governments and encourage them to work together with the broader regional planning agencies so that we can meet these SB 375 goals. You mentioned the Inland Empire suffering from the air pollution impacts of the coast. Clearly, the Inland Empire is not on the coast, but within our region, it's known as an inland port, um, effectively a center point for the transfer of goods from different modes of transportation. Can you tell us a little bit more about the impacts of that on the Inland Empire residents and uh, what that means for the region in terms of serving as an inland port? Yeah, I think uh, transportation and logistics has become the uh, number one job driver in an, in an empire. Uh, we do have other industries, but transportation and logistics seems to be more and more important and more vital to the economic development and welfare of the residents in the uh, area. Uh, I remember when I first came to this area back in the uh, uh, early 1990s, you know, uh, the port of Long Beach developed this um, 
uh, transportation services along the uh, 605 and the 710 freeways north. And then gradually, companies move from uh, City of uh, Santa Fe Springs to City of Industry to Ontario to San Bernardino and Riverside along the 60 and 10 freeways. That's the natural development of um, um, urban sprawl. Um, I remember uh, uh, Pomona Freeway used to be dubbed as uh, Cologne Valley because there are so many computer parts manufacturers and suppliers located alongside the uh, 60 freeway. And that, that's, that's fine. But then uh, they only bring these jobs in the low, um, low wage, low cost uh, warehousing uh, positions. That's not good. I think we need to figure out ways so that the transportation and logistics sector doesn't just bring in uh, distribution jobs, you know, low paid warehouse jobs, but also higher end, possibly light manufacturing or light assembly uh, type of jobs. Because, you know, in the past few years, we have seen this manufacturing returning to the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of transporting goods across the Pacific has increased, and the labor cost in Asia has increased as well. So all of a sudden, you know, Indian Empire becomes more attractive to manufacturers and not just, you know, um, uh, international trade companies. And I think we need to work on that and see if we can combine our strength in transportation and logistics with manufacturing and figure out ways so that we don't just process the imported goods, we also make something for exports. Remember uh, President Obama said that we're going to have to double our exports in the next five years. And we can do that with the help of Indian Empire's existing infrastructure. Well, if you use the existing infrastructure, um, you still have some of the impacts uh, on air quality and on public health. And one of the things that, that we recognize here at South Coast is that we have to reduce uh, emissions by uh, over 75% uh, in, in the coming years to achieve the federal air quality standards. And so one of the key ways to do that is by changing the technologies so that um, we can maintain the growth in the economy. You talked about your technology transfer department and the research you're doing there. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what you see in terms of um, new technologies that may be coming out? Yeah, it's a tall order, you know, 75%, it's not easy to achieve, but then, you know, um, you set the goal high, and then you try your best to achieve that. Mm -hmm. We look at the technology adoption and we look at from two different fronts. One is the technology uh, discoveries. How do you discover new technologies so that we have alternative fuels, we have different ways to power these diesel engines, um, we have new vehicles, mm -hmm. we have new ways to uh, manage transportation capacity, you know, uh, HOT lens or truck only lens and, right. and what have you. The other way is behavior. Uh, how do you initiate behavioral changes among people? People so used to getting into their cars in the morning and drive to work, how do you get them out of the car and move into public transit or move into bike or just walk directly to uh, places they want to go? Right. And so you have these two issues. And for the uh, transportation technologies, we have worked with uh, um, researchers to develop ways in uh, alternative fuels. We work with public transit to uh, measure their impact on their uh, buses. And we also have um, someone who did the research on um, public transit efficiency and eff effectiveness. Um, I, I look at the um, um, website um, this morning and trying to find a bus to come here. Guess what? You know, I drove here, right? So uh, we know the problem. Now we have to find a solution. Right. Um, I think that's the technology we're, we're aiming for. It's the technology itself to power these internal combustion engines more efficiently. And then uh, the second one is to uh, change the behavior so that people are more comfortable riding on the bus, riding on Metrolink, and taking public transit, or just, you know, for a short trip to the shops, just walk or bike. One of the key things, obviously, for these technologies is the investment in the technologies, and a lot of that comes from the federal government. And that money comes through the federal uh, surface transportation reauthorization bill. Um, the, the new authorization uh, is being drafted as we speak, and uh, Congress is working on it. And it's a big bill that will have an impact for the next five to six uh, years on transportation nationally. Can you give us a little sense of how you see what, what may be coming down the pike? Yeah, I think I see a few uh, positive signs in uh, President Obama's new uh, budget proposal. Um, in the next uh, six years, we're going to spend over a half a trillion dollars on uh, transportation. And uh, a couple of things will happen. I think we're going to continue to push the technology. We're going to uh, revitalize the nation's transportation infrastructure, which is in dire need of mm -hmm. such uh, investments. And I think the Obama administration also realizes that we should have a separate bank account for all the transportation infrastructure spending rather than uh, lump them with other uh, budget uh, items. 
So instead of the highway trust fund, we're going to have a transportation infrastructure bank that includes the highway trust fund. And, and that's always a good thing because, you know, the money is off the budget book and it's specifically used for transportation investment. While the rest of the, the, the world um, is investing heavily in their transportation infrastructure for the next generations to use, we have not done the same thing. So I think it's a good thing to do that. And, and let's not forget about the high-speed rail that uh, the California voters approved. And we also receive federal support for uh, high-speed rail. And I think once the high-speed rail is in place, we're going to see some dramatic changes on people's community um, uh, patterns, where they live, how they work, how they commute, and how they uh, how they travel to uh, places in California, up and down uh, California. So I, I see a lot of uh, uh, positive impact on the new transportation uh, budget proposal. Whether the new transportation authorization bill will reflect all of these proposals, that's up in there. And uh, I think uh, no one really has any sense of uh, what will come out of it. It's, there's just a lot of uh, good things that we're working towards getting in there. I want to thank you for joining us today, uh, for your leadership and your, your vision and the development of uh, regional planning, promotion of positive developments in transportation. All of this works to help uh, improve the quality of life for all Southern Californians. Thank you, Mark. I enjoyed it. Well, that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air. Visit cleanairconnections.org to find out how you can help us clean the air that we breathe. Let's work together.